This is Andy Osbaugh from Duke University School of Medicine. In this lecture, we will be discussing the disease known as cryptococcosis. Now, if we go to our pathogen map in the fungal kingdom, the etiology of this infection is cryptococcus neoformans, one of the fungi that goes, grows primarily in the yeast-like form. And looking at this image on the right of this slide, this is the image that most clinicians will be familiar with for cryptococcus neoformans, that of a yeast cell surrounded by a large capsule. So for this lecture, we're going to first consider what patients are at risk for developing this infection, uh, next to determine the clinical features and presentations for cryptococcosis, and lastly, to begin to discuss how to diagnose and treat patients with this infection. How common are cryptococcal infections? Recent data from the United States Center for Disease Control estimate that there are more than 1 million cases of cryptococcal infections every year, resulting in more than 600,000 deaths. This is a staggering number. Also, it's important to note that, that the infections do not occur uniformly throughout the world, but in this graph, it demonstrates that infections due to cryptococcus neoformans occur most frequently in Sub-Saharan Africa and Southeast Asia. Now, why might it occur most frequently in these resource-limited parts of the world? Well, part of the answer may also be partially explained by this graph, looking at data collected from Brazil from the incidence of cryptococcal infections in that country. Now, as you can see, prior to the early 1980s, disease due to cryptococcus neoformans was exceedingly rare, and there were probably less than 200 case reports of these infections. However, in the early 1980s, there was a tremendous spike in the incidence of this disease. Now, we all know that during this time, the HIV pandemic began to occur, and that is the explanation for most of this data. There is a, a tight association between infections due to cryptococcus neoformans and HIV infection, especially pa patients that have late-stage AIDS. So what do we know about this organism that can help to explain why patients with HIV infection and other immunocompromising disorders are at such high risk for this infection? Well, environmental sampling studies have demonstrated that the etiologic agent of this infection, Cryptococcus neoformans, is a yeast that can be found worldwide. It is often associated with trees, such as the one shown on the right of this slide, a eucalyptus tree. And the organism can also be cultured from bird excreta, especially from that of pigeons. So why does an infectious agent that is found so frequently throughout the world, and especially so frequently in association with human environments, not cause disease more frequently? In fact, we know from some seroepidemiology studies that more than 70% of five-year-olds in the metropolitan New York City area have evidence that they've been exposed to this infection. But one of the answers is that this organism, Cryptococcus neoformans, is a true opportunistic pathogen. We are all exposed to this infection. We become colonized or infected with the organism, but our body knows how to deal with it, and we only show symptomatic disease in the setting of immunosuppression. Again, specific forms of immunosuppression particularly predisposed to cryptococcosis, and it is those forms that are associated with CD4 lymphopenia. Now, this is most characteristic and most commonly seen in patients who have late-stage AIDS since the CD4 lymphocyte is the target of the HIV virus. There are other states of CD4 lymphopenia. There are certain immunosuppressant medicines that target this cell, and also a condition that is not associated with HIV infection, but has a similar presentation uh, to AIDS, where you have low CD4 counts, and it is called idiopathic CD4 lymphopenia. All of these conditions of CD4 dysfunction predispose patients to cryptococcus neoformans infections. This organism enters into the lung by inhalation. Although it causes an initial subclinical lung infection, Sometimes this infection can be a bit more severe, as shown in the CT scan on the right side of the slide, where a patient presented with a nodular pneumonia due to cryptococcus neoformans. However, this is very rare, and in most patients, the infection is immediately isolated, 
and regional lymph nodes as well as granulomas throughout the lung. And that is often the end of the story for most patients. However, in certain immunocompromised patients, the organism can disseminate from this primary site of inoculation, and it has a special predisposition for going to the central nervous system and causing infections there. Now, recent studies have tried to indicate whether there is a specific tropism or an attraction of this organism for the central nervous system, and those studies are currently ongoing. Are there other features about this organism that actually allow it to cause disease? And as mentioned before, clinicians and microbiologists uh, recognize one of the main clinical features and biological features of this organism, it's polysaccharide capsule. It's demonstrated in the top panel of this zone of exclusion of a stain from the outside of the yeast cell, noted in the clear halo around the yeast cell. Electron micrograph studies show that this is not a static feature of the cell, but it is, exists as these polysaccharide fronds that extend out from the surface as demonstrated in the electron micrograph at the bottom of the slide. Well, why is this capsule so important? Many studies have demonstrated that the capsule allows the organism to evade the host immune system. Also, the polysaccharide capsule can prevent phagocytosis, can regulate complement activation, and interact with multiple arms of the immune system uh, to allow pathogen survival within the host. Also, this polysaccharide capsule is shed into the surrounding uh, media or biological fluid, and it, its detection serves as the basis for the diagnosis of this infection in most cases. So how does this infection usually present? Well, as I mentioned before, the organism has a special affinity for going to the central nervous system. So most patients with symptomatic cryptococcal infections present with a chronic meningitis, uh, often characterized by headaches, um, photophobia, and perhaps some focal neurological symptoms. Now, this is a very serious condition and can be fatal if not treated because not only does the infection involve the meninges, but it also involves the substance of the brain and sometimes uh, the cranial nerves. In addition to central nervous system manifestations, uh, the uh, infection can also present as a long infection. As mentioned before, cryptococcus most often causes a subclinical or inapparent pneumonia uh, after the, the first uh, exposure of the patient to this organism. However, in immunocompromised patients, uh, this organism can also cause a chronic pneumonia as demonstrated in this image. The organism can disseminate to many different organs, but one of the most characteristic uh, forms of uh, this infection in its disseminated form, especially in immunocompromised patients, is cutaneous cryptococcosis. And this is a very uh, characteristic lesion, this umbilicated non-necrotic uh, lesion, often scattered uh, throughout the body in a highly immunocompromised patients. Once the diagnosis is considered, how is uh, the actual diagnosis made? Again, as in with many of these fungal infections, there must be a high index of suspicion in the right patient population. This will be a very, very unusual infection in most immunocompetent patients. However, in AIDS patients or other immunocompromised patients, it must be considered. Since most of these patients will be presenting with uh, neurological symptoms, often a lumbar puncture and analysis of cerebrospinal fluid will be performed. In patients with cryptococcal meningoencephalitis, there will often be evidence of meningeal inflammation with white blood cells, especially lymphocytes in the cerebrospinal fluid. This is referred to as a lymphocytic pleocytosis of the CSF, or, or too many lymphocytes in this fluid. Oftentimes, with a high organism burden, as seen in the right-hand part of this slide, the actual fungus can be visualized using India ink as a stain and demonstrating the yeast cells surrounded by this halo of capsule. And this form will be the most recognized form of this organism for clinicians as well as uh, for many exam question makers. In other tissues, the organism can be seen as an encapsulated yeast on biopsy of infected tissue, and the organism can be cultured both from uh, lung fluid, 
or cerebrospinal fluid or from other, other uh, tissues uh, of involvement. One very important part of the diagnosis and uh, a great tool for this infection is the cryptococcal antigen. As I mentioned before, the polysaccharide capsule is released from the organism and can be detected by serological means. This is a very sensitive and specific test that is most often performed in cerebrospinal fluid or serum in disseminated infections. Once cryptococcosis is diagnosed, what are the best treatment options? Randomized controlled studies have demonstrated that the combination of amphotericin B and flucytosine is the, the best current therapy for central nervous system infections due to this fungus. Now, again, both of these medications uh, have potential toxicities. Amphotericin B often causes uh, kidney dysfunction. Flucytosine can cause bone marrow suppression and cytopenias. However, when used together and monitored, uh, and, and if the patient is monitored closely, this is uh, uh, the, the best way to treat uh, patients initially with central nervous system cryptococcosis. Now, after the sterilization of the central nervous system occurs, probably after about two to three weeks of therapy, patients are usually transitioned to the yeast active azole fluconazole for maintenance uh, and, and, and complete, complete clearance of the infection. In many patients, when the infection is demonstrated uh, to involve the lung or the skin and not be involving the central nervous system, fluconazole alone can be used as curative therapy. In some resource-limited countries, oral fluconazole is the only option available. Again, IV amphotericin B uh, and flucytosine are just not uh, available. And central nervous system infections can be cured, but at a lower rate than with amphotericin B and flu flucytosine. In patients with immunocompromising disorders, especially HIV infection, the reconstitution of the immune, of the immune system often provides significant benefit for patients with cryptococcal disease. As you can imagine, as the CD4 cells recover and the immune system recovers, uh, perhaps lifelong therapy uh, will not be needed and the patients can truly clear this infection. However, there is a downside to immune reconstitution, and it is a condition known as IRIS, or the Immune Reconstitution Inflammatory Syndrome. Uh, this is seen often in patients with late-stage HIV infection who are uh, begun on therapy for cryptococcal infections and also started simultaneously on antiretroviral therapy. Now, as the immune system reawakens, it often sees the infection and results in an over-exuberant immune response. Um, this can result in symptoms mimicking the infection, so increased central nervous system or pulmonary uh, symptoms as the immune system is trying to clear this previously unrecognized pathogen. Paradoxically, sometimes patients with this iris syndrome need to be treated with temporary immune suppression with steroids while they are, they are also being treated with antifungals to completely treat this complication of the infection. So in summary, we've discussed a, a, an all too common opportunistic infection uh, due to Cryptococcus species. And this little mnemonic, I think, may help you remember the most important take home points of this infection. So the, it's due to Cryptococcus species. The most characteristic cellular feature is this polysaccharide capsule. The infection in its most common and devastating form involves the central nervous system. The shed polysaccharide capsule or cryptococcal antigen serves as an important sensitive and specific diagnostic test for this disease. And the patient population at highest risk for cryptococcosis have a CD4 dysfunction, especially those people with HIV infection in its late forms.